Okay, so for this next video, we're going to focus a little bit more on some of the really common model diagnostics that are done for determining, you know, if your model is kind of behaving the way you'd hope it does. Now, how do you do some of these things we're going to do? Well, first you have to type in install.packages, parentheses, quotation, O-L-S-R-R, -R. and that probably refers to ordinal least squares, regression, or something like that. But you want to install that package, and it'll take a few minutes or a minute, and once it does that, the things we're going to try to do after it does all that red text, the things we're going to try to do, like variance inflation factors and tolerance, you're not going to be able to do those until you then do library parentheses OLSRR. So then that'll attach that package as well. And once you're done with that, we can get rolling. So do those things first and let's create a scenario. So previously, we may have had a regression model that we have constructed you know when you remember you know it was uh, we can call it whatever we want model well we're going to create our own model here that's going to have a lot of multicollinearity model five or we'll call it model seven i don't know i'm up to model seven now model seven and how do we create our model well the first thing this is a linear model so it's lm parentheses and then what are we trying to predict? Well, we're gonna to try to predict life expectancy 2017, and then our variables, so squiggly line, and then our variables, what are our variables going to be? Well, I'm intentionally gonna to try to create a situation where we have multicollinearity. And sometimes we don't. Sometimes the regression analysis takes care of that for us. So we've got the variable in this data set called smokers. But now for these other variables, we're gonna pick on a lot of these income related variables It kinda of maybe do some of the same thing. So here we've got free or reduced lunch. Um, we have uh, plus, I'll do household income. Plus, let's see, I'm in the columns 30 through 79, so um, what else? Maybe, uh, you know, race is sometimes linked to uh, life expectancy. So I'll do African American plus um, we'll do the American Indian population plus. All right, what else? Um, we could do some of the other ones. So what things may be related to life expectancy and that are also, you would presume, are strongly related to income. So I picked on graduation rate, I'll do plus some college, um, unemployed plus unemployed plus children in poverty. Income ratio, the difference between, you know, kind of the wealthy versus the poor, the bigger that difference is, the more disparity there is in that county. Kind of like the Gini coefficient, we'll just call it income ratio. All right, we'll just roll with those and see what happens. So there's a lot of things in there that probably explain a lot of the same things. So when I hit OK or Enter and it runs, now I'm going to do Summary on this Model 7. And, oh, summary Model 7. So our model is statistically significant. The adjusted R square is 56.64%. We have several variables, or at least two, unemployed and income ratios. So sometimes a lot of the multicollinearity problems are solved right here. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna try this um, multicollinearity diagnostics thing here right now. So I'm gonna do models, or not, well we already have our, we've already ran our model, this is model seven. So we're gonna do OLS, I think it stands for like ordinarily squares, you know, VIF for variance inflation factor underscore tolerance, model seven. And it's gonna run those. Now this is not a model that I would ordinarily be running it on because we've got two variables in here that 
at least two that do not appear to be statistically significant. So I went ahead and ran it and this children in poverty value is pretty high. Um, there are a variety of rules that are out there. Some people say never over 10. Some of them say the mean values should be below five or below three. Some people will say none of the VIF values should ever be over five. So there's a lot of different rules out there and you can research those rules on your own because um, you have to kind of take all these things into context. There's kind of an art behind some of this as well. There's no hard and fast rules. But for me, like when I see variance inflation values over three, I'm starting to get a little worried. When I'm seeing them over five, I'm really I'm starting to get more concerned. If my average is over five, that's really bad. And of course, I would never want to see 10. But a few of these are problematic. Um, again, there's no hard and fast. Oh, there are hard and fast rules that are out there online. You can read about different people's rules. But uh, anyways, th those are the values there. Now, when we did our model summary, we see income ratio and unemployed being above 0.5. So we're in the business of creating the most parsimonious model, where parsimonious is kind of referring to the simplest explanation. And those terms are not contributing a lot to the model based upon the p-value approach. So we would go through an approach, in this case called the backward selection, where we will remove one variable at a time and then see what happens. So we have the old formula by hitting up, and I think it was income ratio that performed or had the least impact on the model. So we remove that, then we rerun our summary on that model without it, and now everything is significant except unemployed. So we would then remove that variable unless we had some really strong, compelling reason to keep it, but the p-value is clearly way above 0.05. It's not contributing much. It's not gonna impact this R-square in any meaningful way other than hurt it. So we will put this in there. I'm gonna get rid of unemployed. We've done that. Now we will look at our model again, check to make sure everything is below 0.05 and now everything is below 0.05. This is a more parsimonious model. It's still fairly large, um, but anyways, we can then run our ordinal, our, our VIF values and look at them for our new model. And again, children in poverty is a little higher than what I might want. I'll just you know show you a few little examples out there of some stuff that people uh, put out there as some rules. Okay, so this is kind of like this big public library for R on all the cool tools that are out there. And here's what they say. And this is specific to this um, application package thing that we're running here, this OLSRR package. Now the rules are the same for all statistics, but there's some other cool stuff on here you'll like to see. So let's say, the general rule of thumb is that VIFs exceeding four warrant further investigation, while VIFs exceeding 10 are signs of serious multiclinearity requiring correction. So that's just food for thought, all right? Now, it gives you some examples here. There are some other things that you can look at that are here. This um, package that we downloaded will allow you to um, plot actual versus fitted values so you can um, which is pretty cool there's the command you can actually I think highlight them with your well not entirely but you can highlight it I can type in one of these my main reason for using this package was for the that particular one but we can do OLS underscore plot underscore obs underscore fit model seven and then you can actually get this cool graph that shows you 
here is kind of like uh, in red, I guess, you know, what without any modeling you might figure out or expect. And then with the model, you know, we see this. So you can read more about some of these different things uh, as you wish. So there's a lot of cool um, diagnostics in here. Um, residual versus predicted values, the histogram of the residuals, all kinds of good stuff. A lot of that stuff um, is available through this huge command called OLS underscore plot underscore diagnostics and then model 7 for this model. That's the name of the model. And it's thinking because there's a lot of stuff that it provides. Only one graphic is permitted at a time. If I hit zoom on it, you know, you can see all the different graphs and, you know, if you were to print it or something, you know, you could see it differently. So, some of these plots may not be ideal, um, but they're all there. Um, only one graphics device is permitted, so. All right, that's enough on that. You know, if you're trying to plot that many things at once into our studio in the cloud, you're probably trying to do too much. You can break some of these things up. But anyways, um, the rule of thumb from here, though, is anything according, you know, we'll just say anything over four warrants further investigation. Over 10 is bad. You know, for me, over five is bad. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely over 10 is bad. Also, backward selection processes. How do we remove variables? That's kind of an important deal. So, all these things kind of can be taken into consideration when you're building a, a linear regression model. There are little tweaks that you can do where you log transform variables or you may make variables categorical. Um, taking them from like a class of like a you know, continuous variable and making them into quartiles. Sometimes those things help. Sometimes they don't do anything. Sometimes they may even hurt it um, in terms of meeting model assumptions. So that's all for this video on variance inflation factors and I'm going to and, and using this particular uh, tool. I'll give you guys the link uh, to this particular package. So you can see all the different things uh, that it does. So we will stop there and appreciate your time.